Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we start the topic of multiplexers. Alright. Today we see multiplexers. This is a simple definition that I've written it down to save me a little time. Alright. Not much, but it could also save me half a minute, so that is enough. Multiplexers. Alright. In short, they're known as MUX. M U X. All right. So that's the topic for today. If we have a look at the definition, the definition is what? It's a combinational circuit. Now you know what a combinational circuit is. That has nothing to do with the previous output. It only works on the present inputs. All right. That selects binary information. We know we're dealing with binary information through this whole time. All right, through the whole code from one of the many input lines now this is important it has more than one number of input lines and it directs it to one output line now this is the second important point that we have a single output line okay so now what is this so we have a look let's say that this is represented by a block let's say okay we have uh, a number of inputs let's say we have four number of inputs this is two three and four so this is i naught this is i1 i2 and i3 this is representing inputs all right and we have only a single output y now these inputs are coming to this device at four inputs all right they're coming but we have only one output line now we select we select which one of these coming inputs has to go to the output. Alright, so I can say that the multiplexer is simply a data selector. It is simply a data selector. It selects from the input, alright. Now let's say, let's say he is selecting this I naught. I naught, sometimes this I naught has to be selected, sometimes this I1 would be selected, sometimes this I2, sometimes this I3. Now the choice is you are which you have to select. But the question is, how to select? How do we select? Let's say I want to select I naught. So how do I select it? All right. So for that, we have what? Wait a minute, let me write. How to select? How to select? So the answer to this is that we have select lines. We have select lines. Or, we, or they're also called as selector variables. So we have these to select which input to give to the output. So over here we have four input lines, so we have two selector variables, all right, S1 and S0, out of which this S1 is the most significant bit, we'll see how, S0 is the least significant bit. When we join the truth table, so in that we write the S1 at the least significant position and S0 at the most significant position, all right. Now these S1 and S0 could either be a high or they could be a low. So depending on that combination of this high and low of the select variables, we select the data line which has to be selected. So how is that selected? So let's say we draw the table, we have S1, we have S0 and we have the function Y. Now we know we have uh, two variables, so two to the power four, two to the power two is four input combinations, which make a zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Now when both of them are zero, so this stands for a binary zero equivalent uh, decimal is a zero, so which means I naught is selected in this case. All right. Now if it's a zero, one, so this is the decimal equivalent for one, now I1 would be selected in this case. For this case, this is I2, and when both of them are one, so I3 would be selected. That is how you select. You select with the help of these select lines. 
Okay, and, and now and we have to keep in mind that the number of outputs is always one. The number of outputs is always one. Okay? And what about the number of inputs? So the number of inputs are in the powers of twos. Number of inputs. Could be how many? They could be 2, they could be 4, they could be 8, they could be 16, they could be 32, and so on, alright? So which means we can have a 2 cross 1 multiplexer, we could have a 4 cross 1 multiplexer, we could have an 8 cross 1 multiplexer, and so on. Alright, now uh, we represent this multiplexer by a box, like I drew. To the left we have the inputs, to the right we have the output. And from the down we have the, uh, the the select variables. We can also draw it in this shape. All right. Uh, we can let me draw it over here. Uh, a little tilt it like this, and a little tilt it in this direction, and like this. All right. So this is also a max. Let's say a two cross one max. Uh, so we have two inputs i0 and i1, I have the same output y, and select line s, okay? Now, now how many number of select lines do we have? What, uh, how to decide the number of select lines? Now, this is another important question, all right? Number of select lines, we don't know. So, we know it from the formula. We have a formula to, collect, to calculate it, n is equal to 2, to the power m. All right, where what? Where this n is what and m is what? So n is the number of inputs, and m is what? Now this is the number of select lines. Now you know from your mathematics that to calculate this m, we need to take the logarithm, and and this m would be what? Log to the base two of n. Now that is how you calculate the number of select lines, okay? Is this fine? All right. Now next we do what? We study the 2 cross 1 multiplexer, the simplest multiplexer to have an idea, okay? All right. So the 2 cross 1 multiplexer, all right? 2 cross 1 max. This is the simplest max, okay? Now, now from the from the name, it's clear that we have two inputs. We have this is the two cross one max, let's say. So over here we have two inputs, I naught and I one, and we have the output, let's say y, and we have. How many number of select lines do we have? So let us calculate from the formula m is equal to log to the base 2 of n. Now n in this case is 2, so we have m is equal to log to the base 2 of 2. Now you, you, know from the, uh, you may know from the uh, rules of mathematics that log of base a of a is what? It's 1. Or let me write it down with a different color because it's important to remember. The log to the base A of A is 1. So here we have log to the base 2 of 2. So this would be 1. So which means in this case we have the number of select lines is 1. Which means we only have a single select line, let's say S. Is that fine? Yes, it is. Okay. So now you draw the truth table for it. Uh, the, so the truth table would be what? It would depend on S only. So we have S and we have Y. Now if this S is a zero, so, uh, so I naught would be selected. If this S is a zero, so I naught would be selected. If this S is a one, so this I one would be selected. Is that fine? All right, now you would be wondering why did I leave this space over here? So this is for an entry. We have an entity called what? We have the enable signal, E, all right? 
So, and that, let's say, is input over here. This is the E, enable signal. Now, what is this? So, you can consider it as a power supply to this multiplexer. How is that? Because if it's a zero, so no matter what the value of select lines is, there is no output at the output line. And when it's a one, so you have uh, the output depending on the value of select line. All right, so if I write it over here, if this enable is a zero, now whatever be the value of the switch, the select line, the output would be zero. And when this enable is one, so then it depends on what? Then it depends on the select uh, lines. So if I write down the equation, for the uh, for from that truth table so let's say this y so this is equal to what it's e times s complement i naught plus e s i1 now you can see i can take the enable signal common so e times s complement i naught plus S I1. Now this is the final expression for this 2 cross 1 multiplexer and we uh, draw the logic diagram for it. So we need two AND gates first. Uh, uh, so these are the two AND gates. The first and the second. All right. Uh, so now, what are the inputs to it? So, to the first, we have the input of S complement. So, let's say this S is coming and we complement it over here through the NOT gate. So, this is the S complement, and the next is I NOT. I naught, so let's say I give it this color, I naught. And to the next gate we have S and we have what? We have I1. We have I1. All right. Now, uh, these are two or together. These two are OR together. All right. And this is the case. Now, what to do with the enable signal? All right. So, the enable signal could be given to both of these two AND gates, or it could also be ended with the final value from this OR gate. So I take it like this. Now this is the final AND gate. This is Y. And this is the enable signal, let's say. So you give it to it. And finally you have the Y. Okay, now if you don't want to include this enable signal for your simplicity, you don't want to complicate it for yourself so that's also the okay. case you can you can ignore this signal up till your um, for your understanding okay because you know if it's a one so definitely the circuit will work and this will give you the same thing as this is okay because a added with a one is a one okay so now if you over here you have a one or here you have a one or here you have a zero over here you have a zero all right and if it's a zero, so no matter what you have over here, so that would be a zero over there, okay? So which means the enable always has to be one, and you can neglect it for, to not make it complex. Over here it's very easy, but when you're designing, let's say, 32 cross 1 multiplexer, and you're giving this enable signal to each and every one of the stand gates, so that's more complex, you can give it directly to this gate, or you also have the choice to uh, uh, not uh, mention it, all right? So that's all for today. We'll see some more multiplexers in the upcoming lectures. Four cross one, eight cross one, maybe. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.